Thank you for tuning in to the Be Blessed broadcast. Let's go into the service already in progress. That the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it on today. We want to say once again, welcome to Showers of Blessings. Welcome, Facebook. Welcome, all those that are in the tabernacle. What a great place to be on today. No greater place to celebrate 22 years than in the house of God where it all started. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, glory to God. <laughs> we have the opportunity, the privilege. We want to give honor to God who is the head of my life. We give honor to God, to Apostle Campbell, Overseer Campbell, Pastor Taylor, Pastor Christopher, for all the love, for all the commitment, for all the sacrifices, for everything that they have done in 22 years. If they have done anything for you in 22 years, I need you to give them some praise and some glory because they deserve it on today. They, no one else had to pray for you. No one else was there to counsel you, God. How dare us come into your house, oh God. Forgive us, oh God. I'm repenting, oh God, for this house of God, oh God. That Father God, that we will act, oh God, that this first family has done nothing. They have done so much more, more than many. Giving honor to my husband, my children. Giving honor to the body of Christ, all those who assembled together on today. When we first got the theme for Kingdom Agenda, fearful, faithful, and fruitful. Our main text today is going to come out of Psalms 128. And it reads as such. Blessed are all who fear the Lord, who walk in his ways. You will eat the fruit of your labor. Blessings and prosperity will be yours. Your wife will be like a fruitful vine within your house. Your sons will be like olive shoots around your table. Thus is the man blessed who fears the Lord. May the Lord bless you from Zion all the days of your life. May you see the prosperity of Jerusalem and may you live to see your children's children. Peace be unto Israel. When I first got that, I was like, well, there's the benediction right there. Everyone can be seated. We didn't need nothing else because when we think about the Campbells, we think about all these things that are demonstrated in the scripture. One thing I've come to understand is that the number four in the body of Christ means God's work. And I began to think about it because there are four of them. There are four oceans. There are four Gospels. There are four points on the cross that hang behind me. There are four divisions of every uh, plaque that is hung in the sanctuary. So that means to me that there are four. God is operating in four because it is important. So when we're going to begin to look onto this a little deeper, because what does it begin to say about the body of Christ, and about God, how omnipresent he is, how faithful he is, and how just uh, magnificent that he is on today? He's amazing. He begins to do things that we would have never thought about. And then the other thing that I begin to think about is a tree. There's four parts of a tree. There is the vine. There is the branch. There is the leaves, and then there's the root of the tree. So my thing is, we have to figure out what it says. So when I began to think about fearful, faithful, and fruitful, my thought was, why would God say in his word in Matthew that, um, I'm sorry, in Psalm 139, that we were wonderfully made. We were fearfully made because when we think about fear, we think about something with limits. When we think about fear, it thinks about something that we cannot do. But when God thought about fear, he thought about awe. He thought about reverence. He thought about rev uh, honor. He thought about power. He thought about everything that was powerful in the world. And why would he think that? And our finite mind will think of something negative. Because it takes God time to begin to prune us. And we're going to get into that because if Jesus is the true vine, that's what it says in his word. In his word, it says that I am the true vine. It says, I am the true vine, and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit. While every branch does not bear fruit, he prunes, so that it may be given even more, become more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. 
remain in me and I as also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. Let me say that one more time. No branch can bear fruit by itself. I'm just going to say that one more time just to make sure you're hearing what I'm saying. No branch can bear fruit by itself, but it must remain in the, vein, in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. So what did that say to me? So we talked about how four represents God's work. But I tend to put God's perfect work because everything that he does is perfect. Everything that he does is perfect. So in, in resemblance to Christ, then that would mean that our leaders are the vine. Not that they are Christ, because Christ is their foundation, which is the tree. So then therefore, the apostle and pastor Christopher and Taylor have to be the vine of the house of God. So showers of blessings, our vine is Apostle Campbell, Overseer Sean, Pastor Taylor, and Pastor Christopher. So now that we've got that out of the way, so there's no confusion of what they represent, let's discuss of the fruits that they bear and what we're to do as branches. Because that's what we are. Because if they're the vine and God's watering them and they're watering us by pouring in the word, then that means we have to eventually bear some fruit. But the real question is, do we ever bear fruit? What kind of fruit are you? And only you can determine what it is that you're going to bear. So... According to Matthew 21 and 23, it says, I tell you that the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to people who will produce its fruit. So when we begin to think, we, let's use the pandemic as a great example. So what we began to see was people were beginning to fall off. Churches were closing. But then God spoke to our leader, our overseer, and then all of a sudden we became fruitful because she began to get vision. So let's just see what we need. I was reading an article and it says, fruit bearing is the act of doing good works by obeying the teachings of the word. Fruit bearing is the acts of good works by obeying the teaching of the Lord. So now we're thinking, you guys are the branches. We are the branches here. So the question is, are we doing good works by obeying the teaching of the word? So, I'm here to help you identify what kind of branch you are. So, on today, the first point is we must remain connected. We must remain connected because the word of God that says that he's going to remain in us if we remain in him. And if we're looking at our oracles as a true man and God, a man and woman of God, then we have to remain and to look at them as Jesus, as God. They are little gods. So therefore, if we don't see him right in front of us, we're looking at them for guidance. That means we're looking at them to water. We're looking at them to encourage. We're looking at them to be the example. And I don't know about you, but my first, I'm going to say my first family. My first family are great examples. I, no one else has to say it, but I, I know that my first family are great examples. So I can imagine that this is the conversation Apostle was having with Jesus when he says, I am divine. And then he revealed to him that he was going to preach and teach in the desert. So I'm sure that there was a time where Apostle said, well, how am I supposed to be divine in a dry place? But the word of God said the desert will blossom like a rose. So number one, he had to take that word that they were giving to, that God gave him, and then he had to internalize it. How can we be used as divine? Okay, I'm glad you asked. I'm glad you asked. So what God uses vines to do is to accomplish his purpose in the world. And he blessed those connected to them because G God himself is the vine dresser. He cared about the vine enough that he brought him here. He trimmed him. He cut off the branches that did not bear fruit. So everything that he thought he was going to do that, he was like, God, this is good and this is good. And it went left. That was just God pruning him. That was God pruning their ministry, pruning the blessing that's held within them. And so my thought is, well, if God, if we are a branch, then that means every test, trial, and tribulation is God trying to prune us so we can more resemble not only our Heavenly Father, but our man and woman of God. Because the Word of God says that we should be imitators. So I'm not sure why we think it's okay that the leaders get pruned and we don't. 
It's okay that the leaders can pray. It's okay that the leaders can serve. It's okay that the leaders can teach. It's okay that the leaders can lead. It's okay that the leaders can be self-controlled. It's okay that the leaders can be positive. It's okay that the leaders can do everything that we expect them to do. But what happens when God expects it out of us? Then what? What kind of branch does that make us? Okay. That's the first question I got for you. Well, glory to God. The first, the second point is first, first we have to be able to be connected. But then the second thing is we have to be a branch that's consistent. Because the thing about branches is they can be still or they can be movable. See, apostle is, a, is a, an apostle because he branches out and then he branches different churches. So he's planting. So that means he's utilizing his branch to connect, to branch out, to bring the world the glory. While apostle, while pastor, Christopher and Taylor are on this vine being still in what they, he's called them to do. Because while apostle is branching out, there has to be a branch that's still. So that is what we look at a pastor Taylor and Christopher for. It's about the consistency. Well, what does it mean to be consistent? Being consistent is being the, doing the same thing over and over again. And the one thing in the walk of Christ is just to be consistent in him. It's not even that deep. It's just one requirement. Be consistent in God. What does that mean? You just have to trust God. You have to pray to God. And more importantly, you have to obey God. So what happens is, so when they became and they were consistent, then they become God's use as an extension of God's work. That's why it's God's work, number four. Because that's how God is beginning to utilize them because they're now the, the, the vine and vines intertwine. They go in and out of crevices. That's how, why it's easy for overseer to just go in and out. She can do multiple things because she's multifunctional. So when she's multifunctional, that's because God has anointed her to be the vine while apostles branching out. But she still has to be a vine because she has children. So in order, not just biological children, but she has uh, spiritual children as well. So when she's intertwining, all she's doing is showing how her other children to imitate her, to intertwine in every different crevice of the word of God. So what it is, is because it says it's crucial for your children to grow up believing that God's standards mean something. So that's what we see our overseer doing. When we're doing classes, we're doing meetings, we're doing counseling, we're doing the jobs that we don't think we desire to do or want to do. That's because she's going in and out the crevices to show us how we can be the light. Because the one thing about trees and branches is they blow to and fro, but trees bring light and tree brings life. So therefore, the branches have to begin to sway so allow the sunlight to shed up on the tree. So that's what we're doing, and that's how we're going to be imitators of our leaders. You can also know someone is consistent and faithful because when you correct them, they still commit to the assignment. I'm going to say that one more time. You can know that someone is consistent and faithful because when you correct them, they still are committed to the assignment. That was out of the words of Overseer Campbell. Let me say it just one more time. You know that someone is consistent and faithful because when you correct them and they still commit to the assignment. That means that just as God has asked them to commit to his assignment, to give the word, to be the light, to do the example, when we are the branch, over here we're the branch, remember we're the branch, and apostle and pastor asking us, I need you to teach, I need you to do this, I need you to lead, I need you to serve, we don't have an option. It doesn't matter if we're mad. It doesn't matter if we don't understand. Because I'm sure that there were times when God spoke to apostles and pastors and they didn't understand. And they didn't know what's going on. But they didn't go and say, oh, well, you know what, God? I can't do it. They were consistent because the word of God said, if you be in me, I will be in you. They had to be consistent because the vine is what produces. There, was a mess there is a message in the production. You cannot just produce simply by reading. You have to produce by doing. You cannot just produce by reading. You have to produce by doing. That is why the word of God says you cannot just be hearers. You have to also be doers. But in order for you to do, you have to be pruned. That's point number three. 
So point number three is allow God to prune you, prune you so you can become fruitful. God prunes every branch that produces so it can produce more fruit. And we see Christopher and we see Taylor, how God pruned apostle and pastor. Well, let me tell you how they pruned. Well, God pruned pastor, overseer, her discipline. Then we begin to see that in Christopher and Taylor. As they begin to prune off everything that was being a distraction to her, everything that was causing her to look to the left or to the right, he, she, he, had, to, he had to go in and prune her to be disciplined simply by studying. She spent many years in school, but it wasn't just for no good use. God had other plans where if she did not understand it, she was still disciplined enough to go through it. She was still consistent enough to go through it. She was still connected to the vine because God said it and that he had no, she had no choice but to follow through. So then Christopher and Taylor are a benefactor of God pruning her so she could be disciplined. Then we move on to apostle and God had to prune him in his faithfulness. He had to be faithful because as a head of his house, he, sometimes you might not know what's going on, but he had to be faithful. He had to not look at what his eyes saw. He had to look at what God was telling him. He tells his testimony all the time about the house, about oh, even when he was called. He didn't know exactly what God was asking him to do, but he knew one thing that his hands was in God's hands. And so in that, that was just God pruning him to faithfulness, total dependency on God. So being pruned, and then we see that in Christopher and Taylor. Because what did they do when they, their parents walked off the secular job? They walked off the secular job. That is just them imitating what they saw their parents do because they saw that their parents was consistent. They saw that their parents was disciplined. So what other are they to do if they're imitating the branches? They have to do what the vine is doing and what they've led to do. So that's how we begin to see how it's connected in the four because it's not just about apostle and pastor. It's also about Pastor Taylor and Pastor Christopher because without them, they are basically determining or confirming the anointing that's on their lives. It's not just us spiritual children that confirm that. They have to utilize their biological children to do that. And that's why God will raise them up. Because the thing about it is, it's one thing to have spiritual children, but what about my biological children? It would be bad if they were preachers and teachers and they didn't have nothing in their bellies. So God had to utilize them to show, that's why he had to take them off the secular job. Thank you, Lord. They had to take them off the job because where we were being fickle, where we didn't want to do the assignment, we didn't want to do the calling. He, God knew that he had bared the fruits of two consistent people who would stand obey. Because Christopher and Taylor were branches that did not argue. They didn't uh, ask, well, what do you mean? They said, God, is this what you're leading me to do? That's why Apostle and Pastor gave the testimony that they spoke to their children before. To make sure that it wasn't just out of, uh, um, it wasn't just out of uh, force, but it was because they were devoted and listening to the things of Christ. But how could the kids have done that if they didn't see the vine move? And then as you're using them as branches, they're swaying back and forth. But I, I am going to say to Christopher and Taylor that as, you're, as a branch go to and fro, you will begin to see your fruit. You will begin to see it in the praise team. You will begin to see it in the young people. You guys are not just youth pastors just because. These are the fruits that God is putting under you guys that you guys may be able to see your fruit as you get older, as your kids become older, as you begin to be embedded in your parents because they look and they represent you. You look and represent your parents. I just want to encourage you that even though it gets rough, continue to allow your branches to sway back and forth because branches are either going to be still or they're going to move. The what determines is, is when it's ready to move, will you move? When it requires you to be still, will you be still? The word of God said, be anxious for nothing. But know that if you, God did it for your parents, he's going to do it for you. And know that the branches and the fruit that you guys are bearing are only going to be bigger and greater than the ones that your parents have done. And that's why they had to remain connected. They had to remain disciplined and they had to allow God to prune it so they can begin to see how to begin to encourage their children. 
Sometimes I believe that as a body of Christ, we forget that Christopher and Taylor are an extension. They're simple. They're, if a, authority has no age, has no faith. It doesn't matter what it is, but the same thing that you do for the man and woman of God, you need to do for their children. Meaning that you have to reverence them as a branch and the vine. Until they become the, the vine, you have to respect them as the branch. And how do you do that? You become the fruit. How do you become the fruit? You obey. Hallelujah. And the, the verse that really got me was the one that spoke about the wife will be the vine and then the son of the olive tree. Olive trees are patient. Olive tree takes time. Olive trees can grow up to 20 feet high. We're in year 22. That means they have been maturing for 22 years, which is what the olive does. It matures. Olive trees don't just spring up. They take time to mature. That's why when God decides to crush us, it takes time. And then the oil that squeezes out, that's why it's so precious. That's why when we begin to anoint their heads with oil, he uses the oil of the olives because it took time and it matures over time. So that means that when we begin to, pers- when we begin to bring forth the oils that apostle and pastor pray over, we keep that because it's going to mature over time. So I ask you that as they're maturing as the branches, that you give them time. Be patient. They're not going to know everything. But help them to do that by being the fruit. Don't complain. Don't be a rotten fruit. Don't, don't nobody want to eat a rotten apple. You know, you want something that's crunchy, something that's juicy, something that's firm. Be firm in your faith. Be juicy in your worship. That, that's the kind of fruit that we want to be able to bear as branches. Now, we don't want a rot. We just want to firm. Be firm in your faith. Be firm in your walk. Be firmly grounded. Be firmly planted. Don't go to and fro. And the last thing I want to say is that in regards to olive trees, olive trees requires years of patient labor to to reach the full fruitfulness. The tree's fruitfulness and ability strive suggest the model of a righteous person. So if we're dealing about the righteous person and we're looking at the four, God's work, That's how we begin to see the fruit. That's how we begin to see the oil that's squeezed from our leaders to be rested upon the branches and the olive is because we're patient with us. Every time that they make us that mad, they don't take, they they don't let us out there in the, they don't just leave us. They don't drop the ball. Uh, Quitting is not an option. They're not doing what us as men of uh, men, I'm going to say children of God do because we are not truly mature if we cannot begin to withstand the storm. We're not truly branches until we can stand as firm as the vine. We're not truly mature until we begin to understand that it's not about four people, but it's about the God in the four people. It's about the leadership in the four people. It's about the anointing oil that was crushed. Everything that they went through in the pruning, in the consistency, that's what it is. So we're not truly children until we get that. We're not truly branches yet. We're not truly fruit that represent Christ as of yet. But that's why we're a little olives. Because God is patient and so are our leaders. Thank you guys for your time. Amen. Give God some praise. Hallelujah. Amen. What kind of branch are you? Amen. Are you connected? Amen. Are you disciplined? Amen. Are you prunable? Amen. Like our leaders. Amen. Amen. Next to the podium, this woman of God needs no introduction, but I shall introduce none other than, amen, Minister Desiree. I will bless the Lord at all times and his praises shall continuously be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. Amen giving honor to God, who is truly my life, to our pastor, our apostle, our overseer, to our millennial and our youth pastor. I thank you, overseer, for this privilege and this opportunity. Amen. Amen. So, oh my goodness, Elder Elect Carlisle, that was amazing. That was amazing. 
Amen. I will also be coming from Psalms 128. Amen. If you all will please stand for the reading of the word. I am going to emphasize, however, verses two through four. You shall eat the fruit of the labor of your hands. You shall be blessed and it shall be well with you. Your wife will be like a fruitful vine within your house and your children will be like olive shoots around your table. Behold, thus shall the man be blessed who fears the Lord. Amen, you may take your seats in the presence of God. If I had to title this as a subheading, we were gonna be talking about kingdom loyalty. Not royalty, not just loyalty, because I know we all have loyalty to our friends. We have loyalty to our ministry. We have some form of loyalty to our family, but there is a difference between kingdom loyalty and being loyal. Amen. I would, unlike most of my seasoned colleagues, the Lord gave me a pastor after my own heart, according to Jeremiah 3 and 15. And that is none other than our millennial and our youth pastor, Pastor Taylor and Pastor Christopher, amen. And I would like to say to Overseer and Apostle that I appreciate the time that you took to, to pour into them to give us these leaders. Amen. The standard definition of loyal is unswerving in allegiance. That means that no matter what you say to me, what you do to me, how you chastise me, if you look at me wrong, you got an attitude when you came into the ministry, I am unswerving in my allegiance, not to you, but to the kingdom. The Greek word for loyal is pistos, P-I-S-T-O-S. And to me, it came to mind almost as pistols. Because when you are on fire and you have a loyalty for your leaders, you are like a pistol. You are ready at every moment to take aim and pull the trigger. It doesn't matter what it is. It doesn't matter if you get a phone call at 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning saying, hey, I really need you to do this assignment. That pistol is ready, and I'm ready to take aim and to do the assignment. Loyal synonyms for loyal also are steadfast faithful and trusting. And I, I took a little page out of all of our leaders book and I have a definition for loyalty. Not, not from Webster's, not from the dictionary. Loyalty is the steadfast allegiance whose fruit are reverence, faithfulness, and abundant fruit. Meaning that it doesn't matter who, or what comes along, my loyalty does not change. One more time, loyalty is the steadfast allegiance whose fruit are reverence, reverence, reverence and respect, faithfulness and abundant fruit. I will say that I have kingdom loyalty because no matter how far I have gone, no matter what I have done, I am still, what would you say, loyal to the throne. I'm still loyal to the people who sit on the throne and I'm loyal to the throne as they said in Wakanda. It doesn't matter who sits on the throne, my loyalty is to that throne. So it doesn't matter if Pastor Christopher takes the throne, if Pastor Taylor takes the throne, if Overseer Pastor takes the throne, if Apostle takes the throne, if they choose someone outside of showers of blessings to take the throne, as in Wakanda, my loyalty is to the throne. When we say fearful, we don't mean like you're fright, frightened or alarmed by someone. Like, you know, when you're walking down the alleyway and you know it's too dark and you probably should have took somebody with you. That's not the type of fearful we talk about. This type of fearful is considered reverence. It's when you honor or respect the authority. So the way we reverence our parents. When they say take that chicken out to defrost, we're gonna take that chicken out right then and there and not later. When apostle and pastor says that we have class throughout the week, then we don't get an excuse saying, well, I gotta work overtime. 
when millennial pastor Taylor and youth pastor Christopher says we got a 911 I'm not gonna make any excuses why I can't bring my children here because my pastors have told us that we are putting ourselves out here to minister to your children so if you want your children ministered bring them raindrop in the bucket number one not point number one raindrop in the bucket number one why because we're showers of blessings <laughs> authority doesn't have a face and in the words of the great Aaliyah age is nothing but a number that's so it doesn't matter if pastor Christopher says Jamari Brother Jamari, I want you to come up here and I want you to minister to the children on Youth Sunday. It doesn't matter if Brother Jamari gets up here, Brother Philando gets up here, Miss Paris gets up here. It doesn't matter who is delivering the word for the simple fact that they are on assignment by our leaders. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if pastor told us, since her armor bearer to come and tell us, you know what, pastor would like to see you. Well, pastor didn't come to me and say she wanted to see me. I have been dismissed out of pastor's presence and let me tell you it is not fun She did it so kindly and I didn't know if I was really dismissed or not But let me tell you when words come from our leaders to anyone else They're still coming from our leaders. That's just like God said in Jeremiah three fifteen. I will give you pastors according to my own heart which will feed you guide you and instruct you with knowledge and understanding meaning you've been praying all week for God to give you a confirming word and because God himself doesn't speak to you then you don't feel like you got that confirming word it's just like that story of that man who was caught in that flood and he was waiting for Jesus himself to come down and save him that's 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 what it is that that's that's what it is I'm, I'm gonna move along Ephesians 5 and 21 says submit to one another out of reverence for Christ whether you reverence my anointing whether you reverence their anointing our leaders anointing it says to submit to one another not just to our husbands not just to our wives not just to the ministry it says submit to one another simply because we are doing it out of reverence for Christ because when you submit and you reverence and you respect one another we will not commit spiritual cannibalism and we won't eat on each other we will pray for one another we will assist one another another scripture Titus 2 and 7 it speaks about how our leaders speak with integrity and they teach with integrity and they walk with integrity and this is one of the main reasons why I believe our youth and millennial pastor deserve all respect and reverence because the same word that they preach by and teach by is the same word that they live by and that they walk on so the same God that they are preaching to the youth and they're preaching to the congregation is the same God that they trust it's the same God that they lean and depend on amen faithfulness it is the equivalent to being loyal steadfast in affection and allegiance firm in adherence to promises or in observance of duty so that means that if you came and said you know what apostle and pastor uh, pastor Taylor pastor Christopher I believe that the Lord has called me to work with the youth you have acknowledged that God called you to do something, which means that they are saying, okay, that means you're availing your anointing, you're availing your spirit. So when you are faithful to the ministry and you're faithful to the throne, then it doesn't matter what comes in your way. It don't matter about everything that's going on around you. You opened your mouth and you made your calling and your election sure, which means that that gave God full permission to say, use them use them you want me to use you let me use you girl I'm gonna use you sir because you said that you were available you said that God called you to this so we gonna use you amen and one one great example of faithfulness that I uh, is, it compelled me first Samuel 18 1 through 4 Jonathan and David 
just a brief synopsis. Jonathan was Saul's son. Saul was the king of Israel at the time, right? So that means that if, if we know about secession, Jonathan should have been the king. But the thing about it is, Jonathan was not anointed to be king. Saul was anointed to be king, but Jonathan was not. David was the one who was anointed to be king. And what I loved about how when Jonathan and David had first met, it was right after David had defeated Goliath. So David was at, between the ages of 15 and 19. And immediately it says in 1 Samuel, if you will go there with me, 1 Samuel 18, amen. After David had finished talking with Saul, Jonathan, verses one through four. After David had finished talking with Saul, Jonathan became one in spirit with David and he loved him as himself. From that day, Saul kept David with him and did not let him return to his father's house. And Jonathan made a covenant with David because he loved him as himself. Jonathan took off the robe he was wearing and gave it to David along with his tunic and even his sword, his bow and his belt. That's a covenant right there. One author would even describe it as love at first sight. Jonathan fell in love with David's commitment to Saul. Just like when y'all came in 99, I fell in love with your commitment to the kingdom. So that's why my loyalty is the way it is. I will forever be the Jonathan to your David, millennial pastor, youth pastor. It doesn't matter because if you notice, Saul tried so hard to kill David and nobody knew why. Nobody knew what, what he had done. Nobody knew any of that. But because he was fearful or reverent and the faithfulness was shown, the relationship between Jonathan and David was able to be extended through the bloodline. Drop in the bucket number two. Don't allow the unfaithfulness you see to cause you to miss out on the bloodline covenant. In 1 Samuel 20, David, I will, I believe I will, drop in the bucket number two. Don't allow the unfaithfulness you see, so everything going on around you, to cause you to miss out on the bloodline covenant. As we had said before, Jonathan should have inherited the throne. If, if we're going to talk about just, just regular, you know, on earth, physical type things. But David was the anointed king. So spiritually, David was the king, which is why I believe Jonathan served him the way he did. Because he knew in his spirit that David was the rightful king of Israel. Because of his love for David, he made a covenant with him and it allowed his, his bloodline, no matter what Saul did, it didn't matter that Saul sinned, it didn't matter that God took his hand off of Saul, Jonathan said, I love you and I want to make this covenant with you because I am faithful and I am willing to serve you. Amen. First Samuel 20, in this chapter, David had entreated with Jonathan. And he didn't understand why Saul was so upset. So Jonathan was like, no, 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 it ain't like that. It ain't like that. When you go, go, just go. Because when my dad looks for you at the table and he says that he can't find you, where are you? Then I'll tell him, I let you go. I let you go to offer sacrifices with your ancestors. So Saul didn't ask the first day of the feast. He asked the second day of the feast. And he asked Jonathan, he said, where is David? I don't see him. Why are you not here? So Jonathan said, hey, you know, I let him go. He, he said he needed to go and offer sacrifices. You know, he had to do all this. And then Saul got angry. Saul got mad. Because remember, Saul was trying to kill David. So then he asked Jonathan, you trying to play me? You're not on my side. You're supposed to be my son. How is it that you love David more than you love me? And then Jonathan turned around and said, but what did David do? Why are you trying to kill him? I don't understand this, dad. And instead of Saul speaking to tell him why, because let's all, let's all, Saul didn't have a reason to kill David. He never reason. He can't tell Jonathan that, but he never reason. 
So then at that point, he tried to kill Jonathan because he felt like Jonathan was trying to betray him. So, oh, you, you on David's side. So when David get the throne, you gonna try to kill me too. That was the problem. Saul thought Jonathan and David were trying to conspire against him. But as many opportunities as David had to kill Saul, he never laid a hand on God's anointed. And at the end of chapter 20, Jonathan and David had a signal. They took an arrow boy out. He said, I'm going to shoot this arrow out. And if Saul, if my dad said he's going to kill you, um, this is how I'm going to do it. I'm going to shoot it out. I'm going to yell after the boy. You got to go, man. But if, if I don't do any of that, we good. We good. So I'm pretty sure that when Jonathan had set out that morning, he, he knew it wasn't going to be happy. And David was just hiding behind the rocks. And he shot out those bows. And when David had left Jonathan, the Bible says that he bowed before him three times and he kissed the ground that Jonathan was standing on. And then they kissed and embraced each other. And then Jonathan told David to go in peace. Verse 42 of chapter 20 in 1 Samuel, Jonathan said to David, go in peace. For we have sworn friendship with each other in the name of the Lord, saying, the Lord is witness between you and me and between your descendants and my descendants forever. Then David left and Jonathan went back to the town. Now, I believe that if Jonathan had not done this with David and there was not this covenant, then when, when all of Saul's house died, Mephibosheth would not have been able to sit at the table with David. Now, Mephibosheth was also one of the sons from Saul's bloodline. And when David went to be king, he found out that Mephibosheth was in the streets. Like, oh no, man, Jonathan was my partner. You can't be out there like that. So he had him sit at the table with them. But that was only because Jonathan kept that bloodline covenant. And finally, fruitful. Fruitful means to abundantly be productive or abundantly produce and our youth pastors continue to excel rage is always excelling our millennial and signals conference is always excelling psalms 121 amen psalms 121 and I believe this is why our youth and our millennial pastors continue to be fruitful and they continue to excel. Because Psalms 121 says, I lift up my eyes to the hills. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel would neither sleep nor slumber. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by the day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and going, both now and forevermore. I believe that the only reason why God continues to bless this house is because we have leaders that are kingdom loyal. They teach their children to be kingdom loyal. They teach their congregation to be kingdom loyal. And before I take my seat, I would like to pronounce a blessing over you too. Deuteronomy 28. If you fully obey the Lord your God and carefully follow all his commands, I give you today, the Lord your God will set you high above all the nations on earth all these blessings will come upon you and accompany you because you obey the Lord your God. You will be blessed in the city and blessed in the country. The fruit of your wound will be blessed and the crops of your land and the youth of your livestock, the calves of your herds and the lands of your flocks. Your basket and your kneading trough will be blessed. You will be blessed when you come in and blessed when you go out. The Lord will grant that the enemies who rise up against you will be defeated before you. 
They will come at you from one direction, but they will flee from you in seven. The Lord will send a blessing to your barns, your bank accounts, your investments, your states, your inheritances, your properties, and in everything you put your hand to do. The Lord will bless you in the land that he is giving you. The Lord will establish you as his holy people, you and your youth ministry, you and your millennial ministry. As he promised you on oath, if you keep the commands of the Lord your God and walk in his ways, then all the people on earth, all the people in showers of blessings will see that you are called by the name of the Lord and they will fear you. They will reverence you. The Lord will grant you abundant prosperity in the fruit of your womb, the young of your livestock and the crops of your ground in the land. He swore to your forefathers to give you. The Lord will open the heavens, the storehouses of his bounty to send rain on your land in season and to bless all the hands of work of your hands. You will lend to many nations, but will borrow from none. The Lord will make you the head and not the tail because you pay attention to the commandments of the Lord that, that God will give you this day and carefully you will follow them. You will always be on top and never at the bottom. Do not turn aside from any of the commands that God has given you today to the right or to the left, following other gods and serving you. Amen. All those things I declare in Jesus' mighty name. Oh, give God a praise. Of God. Give God hand a praise. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. Minister Des, hallelujah, praise God, amen, 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 unswerving in my allegiance. You know what I liked? She, 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 the Greek word is close to the word pistol, like my Glock, I'm ready to serve, I'm ready to shoot, I'm on my post 24-7. I'm legion to the crown. I'm legion to the throne. Woo, that was good. I don't know if y'all sleep out there. I don't have my glasses on, so I can't y'all fuzzy, but that was good. Get the YouTube video and re-listen. Amen. Our final uh, uh, speaker on this afternoon, this morning, amen, is none other then Elder Burton, hallelujah. Hallelujah, amen. So uh, it's amazing how all of our messages were intertwined. It's, the Lord is good. Amen. Listen, I, I would like to thank the Lord, amen, for everything that he's done and is continuing to do in, within my life. Amen. Thank you, Lord. I would like to thank the Lord for honoring us with such great spiritual leadership. Bless you, uh, Chief Apostle, sir, Overseer, Dr. Sean, Mother Ma'am, Pastor Taylor, hallelujah, as well as Pastor Christopher Campbell. Bless you all. Hallelujah. I also would like to uh, thank the Lord for allowing us, for leaders that he's given us as examples that shown us what effective ministry looks like for these past 22 years. For that you need to be thankful, hallelujah. Amen. I also want to thank the Lord, amen, for those who support me in ministry here, amen, the minute, the elders, the ministers, the deacons, the mothers, amen, uh, the millennials as well as the babies in this ministry, bless you. I also want to thank everyone that is viewing us social media live stream, our internet church, glory to God, as well as our members and our visitors that are in this church. Amen. Thank you all for attending on today with this celebration. I also want to thank the Lord for those that are watching social media via Facebook as well as YouTube. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule to enjoy and celebrate Kingdom Agenda 2021 with us in the name of Jesus. And lastly, I want to thank the Lord for my, my family, my church family, but also my family, my wife, bless you, Sarah, as well as my children. Thank you all for worshiping with us. Amen. Since you all are already standing, I would like to come out of Psalms 128, verses 1 through 6, King James Version. Amen. It reads thus. 
Blessed is everyone that feareth the Lord, that walketh in his ways, for thou shalt eat the labor of thine hands. Happy shalt thou be, and it shall be well with thee. Verse 3, thy wife shall be as a fruitful vine by the sides of thine house. Thy children like olive plants round about thy table. Verse 4, behold, thus shall the man be blessed that feareth the Lord. Verse 5, the Lord shall bless thee out of Zion, and thou shalt see the good of Jerusalem all the days. Somebody say all the days. All the days of thy life. Verse 6 says, yea, thou shalt see thy children's children and peace be upon Israel. You can have your seat. Let's pray. Father God, we want to thank you in the name of Jesus for this word. Pray, I pray, God, that my preaching and my message will not come with wise or persuasive words, but with a demonstration of your spirit's power. I pray, God, that you would season my tongue, oh God. Let it be the tongue of a ready writer, oh God, that will be able to strengthen, encourage, and deliver your people as I lead them to the cross. In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare, oh God, let our minds be loosed, oh God, so we bind the, the, uh, the, the prince and power of the air that tries to blind the minds of believers, God, will we thank you that their minds will be loosed, oh God, their ears will be circumcised, they hear the unarrated gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, and for that we give you glory, honor, and praise in the name of Jesus, hallelujah. So, I want to thank the Lord for giving uh, my sisters and I this opportunity to celebrate as we'll honor our God-given spiritual leadership on this year's Kingdom Agenda 2021. Hallelujah. 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 So our mother in the faith has given us this opportunity with this theme. It is fearful, faithful, and fruitful. Let me say it one more time. Fearful, faithful, and fruitful. Now, now, I would like to bring your attention to this exact same text, but within a different translation, okay, of the Bible. It is NCV, which is New Century Version, okay? Just listen to what it reads. It says, 128, NCV. Happy are those who respect, somebody say respect, the Lord and obey him. You will enjoy what you have worked for. And you will be blessed with good things. Your wife will give you many children like a vine that produces much fruit. Your children will bring you much good like olive branches that produce many olives. This is how the man who respects, somebody say respects, the Lord will be. May the Lord bless you from Mount Zion. May you enjoy the good things of Jerusalem all your life. Somebody said all your life. May you see your grandchildren and let there be peace in Israel. Okay. Lord, the Lord took me to this, this translation in order to help me to better understand as well as to be able to explain this year's theme in the kingdom agenda. Fearful. A profound reverence and awe, especially towards God, reverence, honor, and respect that is felt and shown towards God and his representatives. So listen, so since this is a Bible teaching ministry, let's look at Psalms uh, 123 in CV verse 1. Happy are those who respect the Lord and obey him. Yes. My first point is respect the ministry. <laughs> what does that look like in scripture? In, in Kings, we have the prophet Elijah in whom the Lord had instructed to go and find Elisha after he had fled from Jezebel. Now, once Elijah had found Elisha, who was plowing the 12th tro uh, a pair of oxen, Elisha had passed by him and he cast his cloak upon him. This is when Elisha had left the oxen and he ran after the man of God and he said, let me kiss my father and my mother and then I will follow you. So, in 2 Kings chapter 2, verses 1, 2, and 3, in the NIV, this is what it says. When the Lord was about to take Elijah up to heaven in a whirlwind, Elijah and Elisha 
were on their way from Gilgal. Verse 2 says, Elisha said to Elisha, stay here. Look, the Lord has sent me to Bethel. But Elisha said, as surely as, uh, as surely as the Lord lives and as you live, I will not leave you. So they went down to Bethel. Verse 3 says, the company of the prophets at Bethel came, uh, came out to Elisha and asked, do you know that the Lord is going to take your master from you today? Yes, I know. Elisha replied, but do not speak of it. This right here is an example of fearful. One who respects the Lord and obeys him. As we can see, Elijah respects the Lord's command. Because why? He obeyed and then he said, listen, the Lord has sent me to Bethel. Bethel means house of God. I'm so glad that and, and thankful that the Lord has given us leaders that are fearful. What did that mean? Those, those that respects the Lord's commands and obey him. Our chief apostle, our mother in the faith, as well as Pastor Taylor and Pastor Christopher, they all have respect for the Lord's command and has obeyed him. By what? Submitting and coming into the house of God, Bethel serving for these last 22 years Jeremiah 3 and 15 says and I talking about who the Lord he says will give you shepherds somebody say pastors shepherds after mine own heart who will guide you with knowledge and understanding let me let me let me let, 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 let me stop here let, let me stop here okay because because Elisha was also fearful let me explain it to you. Fearful being one who respects and reverence. Remember the definition of reverence, what it means. Honor and respect that is felt and shown not only to God, but also his representatives. Okay. You see, Elisha showed honor and respect to the man of the, to, to God that was inside of his spiritual leader. Listen. The first place that good leadership would lead you to is towards the house of God. That's the reason why I'm grateful for our spiritual leadership. Even during a pandemic, the first place that they said, we are not going to close the church. Our, ch our church doors was never closed from the start. Amen. It was never closed from the start. Okay. So, so listen, it says, uh, uh, faithful. Faithful is steadfast affection. And or allegiance. Go ahead, woman of God. Loyalty. Okay. An unswerving allegiance. Check this out. Firm in adherence to their promises and or observance of duty. Psalms 123, uh, Psalms 128, verse 3. This is in CV. Okay. New century version. Your wife will give you many children. Uh-oh. Like a vine that produces much fruit, your children will, give, will, will bring you much good. Like olive branches that produce many olives. This is an example of the faithfulness of God. If not, it is not by chance, okay? It's not by chance that the Lord elevated our chief apostle to presiding prelate of the International Churches of Praise Fellowship. It's not, it's not by, by, by happen chance. That the Lord spoke to Chief Apostle and said, release the ministry of Showers of Blessings Faith Worship Center to his wife, Dr. Sean Campbell. Listen, excellent choice, don't you agree? Excellent choice, don't you agree? Excellent choice, don't you agree? Listen, um, it says, the Lord was faithful to them by giving them biological children that serves and that have wholehearted devotion to the things of God. Listen, but there's also, also been a birthing in the spirit of multiple spiritual children like you and I through this ministry under the spiritual leadership of this great woman of God. Hallelujah. Our chief apostle's wife, I give God, God give God glory for our apostolic under shepherd. I love you, woman of God. Listen. To explain this in scripture, 2 Kings 2, verses 4 through 6. This is what it says in the NIV. 
Then Elijah said to him, stay here. Elisha, the Lord has sent me to Jericho. And he replied, as surely as the Lord lives and as you live, I will not leave you. So they went to Jericho. Verse 5 says, the company of the prophets at Jericho went up to Elisha and he asked, do you not know, know that the Lord is going to take your master from you today? Verse 6 says, then Elisha said to him, uh, 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 listen, stay here. The, 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 the Lord has sent, sent, sent me to join you. And he replied, as surely as the Lord lives and as you live, I will not leave you. So the two of them walked on. My second point is, faithful while in ministry. Faithful while in ministry. Okay, so this is another example of excellent spiritual leadership. What is what I'm talking about? They are steadfast, affectionate. And allegiance to the things of God and to God's people. So what does that mean right there? After being in Bethel, the house of God, okay, hallelujah, Elijah, the man of God, made sure that he was steadfast in his allegiance, not only to God, but also to Elisha. Listen, because the next place that he had to encounter or face was an obstacle called Jericho. So listen, even in our own spiritual leadership, we're steadfast in their allegiance also to God and also to us as God's people. When we went and we marched before us and they did the same thing that he did in scripture, we did the Jericho March Wall March. Amen. The Jericho Wall March. Listen, all around this entire property. Now, I don't know about you about that sixth time I got kind of got sweating, okay? But, okay, but on this, this, this campus many times, and then our chief apostle, he blew the shofar as well as we shouted. So mind you, mind you, spiritually, something did happen. And I believe that our Jericho walls, amen, our obstacles have completely fell down. Hallelujah. Even, even after the Jericho wall victory, Elisha, the man of God, went to Jericho as well, being steadfast in his allegiance to take him to the place of the crossing of the Jordan River. Uh, of the Jordan River. Now listen to this. This is why it is so important to honor and respect as we celebrate spiritual leadership. Check this out. Because... Because the Lord has used them to help assist us by giving them divine and in our spiritual instructions and directives on how to conquer our obstacles of Jericho as well as supernaturally showing us how to cross the Jordan. That was a home run right there. Hallelujah. So, so remember, remember in scripture there was the priest who has stepped into the Jordan River, amen? So when they stepped into the Jordan, listen, when they stepped in, that's when the waters began to stop flowing and the children of Israel crossed over. Y'all remember that? But also, within this text, it was Elijah who took off his cloak, oh my God, who rolled it up and he uh, 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 hit the water and it departed to the right and to the left. And then they walked over on dry ground. Now, that supernatural acts of God, let me stop here. Elisha, faithful, loyalty. He had an unswerving allegiance, not only to the Lord, but to his spiritual leader as well. Listen, listen. He went with him all the way to the end. Remember, firm in adherence to his promise. And observance of duty check this out Elisha said as surely as the Lord lives and you know the Lord can never die glory to God so as surely as the Lord lives and as you live I will not leave you where did he go from Gilgal Bethel Jericho and then Jordan listen listen Elisha was also faithful in being steadfast in his affection what do I mean by that he loved his man of God he loved his apostolic under shepherd. He loved his leader. Listen, listen, listen. It says, it says, he loved his leader. So whenever those other prophets had come with a negative report, 
that concern his spiritual leader. This is what he said. Yes, I know, but do not speak of it. He shut it down. He was faithful. These were familiar people. These were, these were familiar people unto, unto Elisha. These were familiar people. He knew them. The school of prophets, he went there with his leader all the time teaching. He served his leader so they knew not to go up to Elijah. Okay? They knew not to go up to the, the man of God, but they sure went to his adjutant. Okay? Sure went to his adjutant with a, with a negative report. But what did he do? I know, but don't even speak about it. Amen. He was faithful with his words. Okay. So, so listen. He was faithful with his confession. Fruitful, yielding and or producing fruit, being abundantly productive. Psalms 128 verse 5 in CV, New Century Version. May the Lord bless. Somebody say bless. bless. You from Mount Zion, may you enjoy the good things of Jerusalem. Somebody say all of my life. Okay, so listen, my third point is fruitful in ministry. It's amazing, it's amazing how the woman of God first started and she talked about how of the, the pruning process, amen, okay? And then, and then, and then the, the second woman of God started talking about, you know, uh, 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 them coming together being ministry, ministry-minded, kingdom-minded ministry. And it's amazing how the Lord got, got, got me on this subject about ministry, Respecting the ministry, okay, okay. It says uh, being faithful while in ministry, okay. And the last one is fruitful in ministry. So Second Kings two, nine through fifteen. I'm not going to read it all, but I want to pick out certain specific scriptures. Okay, it says this is when the man of God Elijah he had asked Elisha this question. Listen, after he after after he went walked the whole walk with him, Amen. Completed the task. He turned around and said to him, well, listen, tell, tell me what can I do for you after I'm taken up from you? What, what, what do you want me to do? Okay, so, don't, don't take this to offense, but just, just, just let me, just hear my heart, amen. Just hear my heart, okay. As, as Dr. Walker said, I ain't trying to hit everybody, but I'm going to throw rocks up if, if, if I'm going to hit somebody, amen, okay. So, so listen, listen, it says, we, it says, we as spiritual children, we do not have the right to ask our leaders for anything. Oh, I'm going to explain it to you, but I'm going to say it one more time. We as spiritual children, we do not have the right to ask our spiritual leaderships for anything. Okay, let me explain. First, they are already serving us, doing what the Lord has instructed them to do. They have assisted us with going to Bethel, the house of God, instructing us, giving us the divine insight. They, they took us to the, the Jericho wall, helped us to remove whatever obstacle was in our life. Listen, and then they took us to the Jordan to cross the supernatural, taking us into the promised land. Listen, they're already serving us, so we, we really don't got no reason to ask them for anything because they're doing more than enough. Take my head off to that one, okay? I'm taking my head off to that one. Amen. Okay. So we as spiritual children, we don't have the right to do that. Listen, listen to this. We won't have to ask these questions if we would just come into the house of God, Bethel, and listen to the divine messages and instructions that is coming through the pulpit telling you exactly what to do. Touch that. That's a touchdown right there. So you wouldn't have to have a meeting with the overseer. You wouldn't have to have a meeting with chief apostle. You wouldn't have to have a meeting with Pastor Taylor. You wouldn't have to have a meeting with Pastor Christopher. If you just got your butt up, come into the house of God and hear the messages that goes forth. I'm trying to tell you. Okay. So, 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 so that right there is, is, is just a thought. It's just a thought. But listen, once we have shown our commitment and as we have been qualified completely just like Elisha did to his spiritual leader Elijah then somebody say then, then. our leader would be the one that would ask this question okay what can
can I do for you after you done served all this time? Okay, you done, you done went with me to Bethel. You done went with me to Jericho. Go, you, you done went with me to the Jordan. Now, after, after you've done all that with me, then you can, what, what, what do you want me to do? Okay, for you. Okay, then, then and only then. I'm going to say it one more time. Okay, I got good time. Then and only then are we able to respond to that particular question with this answer. Let me inherit a double portion of your spirit. Let me stop right here. Because many of us preach about let me have a double portion of the, of, the, of the spirit. Okay. Listen, let me stop right here. It didn't say a double portion of God's spirit. No, it didn't. No, it didn't. It said, it didn't say a double portion of God's spirit, but a double portion of your spirit. Listen, listen, to, listen to this. Listen to this. Okay. Elisha, you see, listen, it was not a capital S. No, it was not. But it was a lowercase S signifying that it was a double portion of the man of God's spirit. See, a lot, see, a lot of people don't want to hear that. See, they, they, they don't want to hear that, okay? God, give me a double portion of your spirit, God. But God, God, God got order. He got, he got divine order of how this whole thing works, okay? So, so here it is. He not overriding his leadership just to give you a double portion of his spirit. No, you get yourself in line, submit under the man and woman of God, and then after you fulfilled your walk, okay, to the ministry, respecting the ministry, being faithful while in ministry, and being fruitful in ministry, then you're able to ask that question. Then they're able to say that to you and you're able to respond to them. But it says, give me a double portion of your spirit. So you cannot tell me that our spiritual leadership isn't significant. Listen, when it comes to being fruitful in ministry, the Bible clearly says that we need them in order to be fruitful in ministry. Well, I'm going to say this well. I need a double portion of your spirit, Chief Apostle, Sir, Overseer, Dr. Sean, Ma'am, Pastor Taylor, Ma'am, Pastor Christopher, Sir, I need a double portion of your spirit. If nobody else may not want it, I do. Glory to God. Oh, my God. Listen, in my conclusion, Elisha said, you have asked a difficult thing. But if you see me when I am taken from you, it will be yours. So, as they walked along and they talked to each other, suddenly, somebody say suddenly. Suddenly the supernatural happened. There was a chariot of fire and horses that appeared and it separated the two, taking Elisha into heaven. Elisha saw this happen and then he tore his clothes and he picked up his cloak and that had fallen to, from Elisha and he went back to the Jordan and this is what he did. He took up that cloak and he struck the water with it. And just like he seen his leader do, he did the same thing. Where now is the Lord, the God of Elijah? After striking the water, the Jordan, it divided to the right and it divided to the left. And as they walked over on dry ground, this is how you'll know that you are fruitful in ministry. Elisha finished his mandate. Elijah finished his mandate. Elijah finished his mandate. One more time. I hear you, Lord. Elijah finished his mandate from the Lord and he passed everything that he had to his spiritual son and got, and it got it picked up. Listen, he got picked up first class and went to heaven first class. Amen. Well, Elisha finished his mandate and he got picked up first class in some chariots of fire and horses and went to heaven first class. Okay. Okay. That, 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 that was phenomenal for me. Okay. But, okay. Uh, then Elisha, Elisha, he kept his eyes on the spiritual leader. Listen, this is what I mean by this. He implemented all of the training that he had seen his leader do. And the supernaturally, the supernatural occurred also within his ministry, making his ministry fruitful. Verse 15, is, and this is my conclusion, verse 15 in that same text in 2 Kings, 
the company of the prophets from Jericho who were watching said, the spirit of Elijah is resting on Elisha. And they went and met him and bowed to the ground before him. What does the spirit of Elijah is? The spirit of Elijah is this. It's in Malachi 4 verses 5 and 6. See, I will send the prophet Elijah to you before the great and dreadful day of the Lord. This is it right here. So when the spirit of Elijah is on a person, he will turn the hearts of the parents to their children and the hearts of the children to their parents. So listen, my prayer is that we all would grasp these biblical principles and be those who honor and respect God and his spiritual leadership that's set in place. Listen. This is the exact reason why we are presented with this opportunity to celebrate our spiritual leadership that has served the Lord and his people for these 22 years. Being fearful, faithful, and fruitful. Now let's stand as we give God praise for such excellent examples of spiritual leadership. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Come on, 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 come on. Hallelujah. You're worthy. They're worthy. They're worthy of double honor. Amen. The Bible says in John, 1 John 1 and 9, it says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us of our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. Before I turn the mic over, I just want you all to repeat this prayer with me. Amen. Even those that are even social media, live stream, YouTube, replay, repeat after me. Father God, thank you for loving me even when I was unlovable. So today I want to show you I love you by confessing all my sins transgressions and iniquities to you I repent and renounce everything that's not like you and I ask you Lord to come into my heart transform my mind so that I may be a disciple of Jesus Christ hallelujah bless the Lord thank you all for listening amen Thank you for tuning in to the Be Blessed broadcast. We pray that you are blessed by the message. If you were, please like, share, comment, and definitely subscribe. Or if you would like to order this message in its entirety, please go to our website at www.sbfaithcity.org and there you can sign up to partner with us for the Gathering of the Eagles where you receive all the messages in their entirety for Wednesday and Sunday. I promise you won't be disappointed. But remember, here at Showers of Blessings, we want you to be blessed.